Hey everyone, well, back with you today, and today I'm taking on Chris Matthews. I'm sure that most of you have seen the clip of Chris Matthews suggesting that Donald Trump's reference of his America First slogan was Hitlerian. That's right, Hitlerian. And then he goes on to make his argument. And what does he do? He goes and cherry picks from some history from the 1930s, uh, which for those of you who don't know, uh, in, the, in the early 1930s, uh, there was a lot of people who saw, uh, on both sides of the Atlantic, who saw this new European war, World War II, people saw this coming. They saw it coming in advance. They knew it was gonna happen. Now, there was a lot of people, of course, at that time who didn't want to get involved in another European war. And that's what that was all about. <clears throat> now, there's other circumstances, which I won't go into because it would take too long. But the fact of the matter is, Chris Matthews wants to cherry pick a little bit of history and try to apply that to uh, today, the modern day, with Donald Trump's slogan of America First. The fact of the matter is, if you really want to do a uh, study of that and find out all the various references to the America First and how it relates to our history, you'll go all the way back to George Washington, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, James Monroe with the Monroe Doctrine, uh, Lincoln, uh, Kennedy, uh, Reagan. You can go on and on and find many references to America First. It's not necessarily a nationalistic or a fascistic uh, pledge or anything like that, uh, or a commitment to any type of um, uh, totalitarianism or anything like that. Uh, it's just, again, it's, it's just butthurt liberals who can't seem to wrap their head around uh, the overall situation in the world, not just in this country. Chris Matthews is clearly spending way too much time in his little bubble, in his echo chamber, talking and listening to people who think just like him. The fact of the matter is, what is happening uh, and what brought Trump uh, to power is the fact that there is a pushback against globalism and it's all over the world. It's all over the world. And it's resonating with people all over the world because globalism has been a tremendous failure, a tremendous failure, and Trump recognizes that, as does many Americans, Europeans, Japanese, Australians, and people all over the world. This is what is happening, Chris. So to cherry pick a phrase of, of, of Americanism, buy American, uh, America first, made in America, all these types of things have a long history in America, and they don't necessarily have anything to do with totalitarianism or fascism or Nazism or any of the other things. And just for your information, Chris, um, Adolf Hitler was a socialist. He was a lefty. He was a lefty. He wasn't a, a, a conservative by any stretch. Nazi stood for National Socialist Party. Hitler was a socialist, a lot like you, Chris, and your friends. So once again, you're an idiot. And again, Chris says, what will, what's Theresa May going to think when she sees this, this statement, America first? Well, let me tell you what Theresa May is going to think of that. First of all, no American gives a shit what Theresa May thinks of it. She's got her own problems. They just voted for Brexit in England, and she's got to figure out how to make that happen. The pressure's all on her. Probably the farthest thing from her mind is what Donald Trump said in his inauguration speech. She's pr pretty busy with her own issues. But we really don't care what Theresa May has to think about it. <clears throat> in fact, I'll tell you this, Chris. <clears throat> Not just Theresa May, but European leaders, uh, leaders in Japan, Australia, and all over the world. They better get used to that phrase, America first, or putting our country first, because that's exactly what the people of Great Britain are going to be demanding, because the citizens of Great Britain will have seen Trump's speech saying, I'm going to start putting America first. And they're all going to say, wow, those Americans are lucky. They finally got a guy who's going to put them first. I sure wish we had a leader who would put our country first. How about Britain first? 
And the German people, they're going to see this speech and go, wow, we need a leader like that. We should put Germany first. And the same will be true in Japan and Australia and all over the world because that's exactly what a president of a country should do. Every president should put his countrymen first. That's his job. And as long as everybody's putting their country first and when they get together to hammer out a negotiation, everyone will know that the leader of their country is getting the best deal for them that they can instead of selling them out to the globalist. So Theresa May, regardless of what she thinks about it or what Angela Merkel thinks about it, they better get very used to it because they're going to hear it coming from their populations by the millions because it's a trend that's happening. It's an anti-globalist movement and it's started five, six years ago. It's going to continue for another 10, 15 years as long as it takes to overturn this move towards global government. That's what's happening, Chris, you moron. And he says, oh, well, Putin must have been really happy. That's because that's what he's been saying. Yes. And have you looked at Mr. Putin's approval ratings in Russia? He maintains over 90% approval ratings. He's probably the most popular leader in the world to his citizens and to a lot of other Europeans as well. And there's a lot of Americans who like Putin. Not that he's a wonderful guy, but one thing you can say for Vladimir Putin is that he puts Russia first. That's his country. He represents his country and his countrymen, and he puts them first, as he should do. And if you look at another really popular leader in Iceland, he's very popular, and he's an Iceland first guy. So basically, this move toward nationalism uh, away from globalism is a paradigm shift that's happening all over the world and will continue. And let me tell you what you need to do, Chris. Uh, Chris, you need to get in your car and you need to start driving across this country. You need to stop in North and South Dakota and Montana and Missouri and Iowa and Texas, Oklahoma, or Arkansas. You need to just keep driving. You need to make your way into Michigan, up into the Rust Belt, Wisconsin, Ohio, Indiana, Kentucky, Pennsylvania. Then head on down to the South, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina, Florida, Louisiana. Head throughout this country, Chris, and get your ass out of the echo chamber that you live in and start walking up to just average people on the street and asking them what they think of Trump's America First pledge. I'll tell you what they're going to tell you, Chris. They're going to tell you, hell yeah, it's about time someone put America first. It's about time that we became uh, the priority in this world as opposed to the globalist. That's what they're going to tell you, Chris. No one's going to look at you and go, wow, that sounds awfully Hitlerian. No, Chris, it doesn't sound Hitlerian. It's not Hitlerian. And let's not forget, Chris, without going into too much detail here about uh, this specific example that you're stating. As I mentioned earlier, in the early 1930s, remember, we had just come out of World War I. Americans didn't want to be involved in that war, but Woodrow Wilson suckered us into it. Okay, so with a false flag operation. So we get into World War I, that finally is over, then 20 years later we get World War II, and people saw it coming, and they didn't want to be a part of it, not here or on the other side of the Atlantic. Of course, for the people in Europe, there was no way for them to avoid it, and eventually it, it just worked out that there was no way for us to avoid it, because we were attacked by uh, the Japanese at Pearl Harbor, and of course Hitler declared war on us. We did not declare war on him. He declared war on us first, and we followed up and declared war on him after he declared war on us. Now, just for the history, Chris, if you actually want to bring up this point, uh, in the 1930s, sure, it's true that a lot of Western industrialists and Mr. Lindbergh and, and Mr. Ford and all those were fairly uh, supportive of Adolf Hitler because he hadn't revealed his hand. The industrialists, as, along with many in our government even, saw Adolf Hitler. I mean, he was on the cover of Time magazine. He was a cosmopolitan man. Uh, he had a lot of support. He had a lot of financial and political backing from a lot of people in the United States, uh, in South America, in Europe, because they saw two wonderful things that could come from, uh, from, from what Adolf Hitler was talking about uh, before he allowed us to see his, his cards he was really holding. See, he was going to be building a large military machine which made a lot of Western industrialists billions of dollars. 
They were going to make a fortune helping Hitler build his military. And their belief was that Adolf Hitler despised the communist, which he did, and that he was going to go fight the communist. We were going to help him build a huge military, and and billions of dollars would be made, which would create lots of jobs in America and Europe. It was beneficial for both sides as far as they saw it. Lots of money would be made, lots of jobs would be created. And then the cherry on top was he was going to take that military and go defeat the communist so that we wouldn't have to go fight the communist. That was the plan. Now, of course, he went rogue and he, and he, and he, and he, and he uh, changed the game in the, middle of the, in the middle of the game. He decided to head west and attack his European, not so much allies, but, but uh, Western European countries. But he still ended up going to Russia and, uh, and uh, having a Russia campaign, which is really what cost him the war. But these types of events, as they play out through history, you can never know exactly. No one has a crystal ball. Uh, but to try to take that whole situation from the 1930s, the anti-war movement of the 1930s, and to try to associate it with anti-Semitism uh, and uh, to try to associate, associate it with Nazism or nationalism or Hitlerism, uh, this, is, this is a very, very, very big stretch, and it's cherry-picking. And it's, it's ignoring the fact that the America First slogan dates all the way back to the founding of our country. Uh, and it's been used by both sides. It's been used by Republicans and Democrats, liberals and conservatives, and populists and nationalists. So, really, you're reading way too much into it. And the fact of the matter is, Chris, honestly, you and your asshole colleagues at MSNBC and CNN and others at the New York Times, you know what Trump means. He's laid out specifically what he means by America First. He's talking about trade deals. Uh, he's talking about uh, carrying uh, an equal share uh, of the load of uh, fi financing and funding NATO and the mission that, that they uh, currently serve. So Trump's, Trump's idea of America First <clears throat> and his nationalist approach is not a fascistic one. It's, it's not a totalitarian one. It's simply a make, make America First as a patriotic slogan to encourage people to buy American and to encourage American companies to stay in America and create American jobs for the benefit of American citizens. That's what it's really about, Chris. And you're reading way too much into it, and you know it. It's just more uh, uh, negative slamming of Trump because you're butt hurt because Hillary didn't win. And believe me, uh, Chris, uh, Hillary has a lot more in common and had a lot more in common with Nazism and uh, socialism and Hitlerism and all that than Trump ever will. So that's my thoughts on Chris Matthews. He always has been an asshole. He continues to be an asshole. And, and people, if you watch MSNBC or CNN, you really need to turn them off. You really need to turn them off because uh, this is disgusting. Fortunately, I know that Trump's not going to put up with the crap, and I'll be looking forward to uh, his response to Chris Matthews or certainly someone in the administration because that kind of rhetoric uh, right after an election is not only divisive, it's very dangerous. It's very dangerous. And Chris Matthews is going to end up getting a lot of the very people that, that, uh, that look up to him. He's going to end up getting a lot of those people a good beatdown, uh, a couple days in jail, and a healthy fine. That's what they're gonna. That's what these people are gonna get if they continue to listen to Chris Matthews. So he's a dangerous and divisive, uh, butt hurt liberal, and uh, he's an asshole. That that's basically the bottom line. With a with a uh, uh, sick method of going back and cherry picking history to try to uh, create problems. <clears throat> that, that's all it is for Chris Matthews. So screw you, Chris, and uh, y'all just turn that, that guy off. Stop watching him. He's an a-hole. See ya.